Hello, what is up guys? It's Evil Duos Arm here today, back with another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be taking our series that we've been working on, our 2D side-scroller game, and we're going to turn it into an endless runner, or show you how to make an endless runner out of this. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with the series, you're going to feel a little bit lost with this, but the general concepts will apply if you're just using the 2D side-scroller template. You just won't have all of the animations or the character that I'm using. You can use the default stuff that you get in that 2D side-scroller template if you want to follow along that way. But because I already have this all set up with my own little series, I'm going to use it. If you do want to catch up in the series, you don't need to watch the entire series because there's a lot of stuff we're not going to be using, but you should watch the first couple of episodes where we go ahead and create the character and create the animations. That way you'll have everything you need to pick up right where we are right now. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So the very first thing we need to do is create a new level. So we're going to head down to our level folder that we created in the content browser on the left. And we're going to go ahead and create a new level. Let's just take level one, control C and control V to create a new level there. So what we want to do now is rename this to endless runner. And I forgot there can't be any spaces. So endless runner, we'll just call it. And let's open the sucker up. It's going to look exactly the same as this one we have right here. Now, if you've been following along, you're not going to have this piece here. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. That was me trying to make stairs and I just couldn't get it to work. So I do apologize. Anyway, for this, what we want to do is get rid of everything that we see here. So we want to get rid of this guy. Get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. We don't want to load any levels in. We don't want a base floor to start with. We will keep our player start, however. So go ahead and delete all the floors. The next thing we need to do is we need to make our character so it only works in this game mode. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to hop into the 2D side scroller blueprint. It's this option right here if you haven't changed anything. And then in the blueprints folder, you're going to see an option that says 2D side scroller game mode. Go ahead and click on that control C and control V to create a new 2D side scroller game mode. We're going to rename this file to endless runner game mode. So call that one endless runner game mode. Control shift S to save everything that we've done so far. The next thing you're going to want to do is go into the character folder on the left side and see our 2D side scroller character. Control C him and control V him to create a duplicate here. Rename this file to endless runner side scroller character. So you just have the same name that I'm using when we're playing endless runner side scroller character. So control shift S once again to save everything we've done. Open up this file here, the endless runner side scroller character. Now in here we have all of these different animations and the stamina consumption and all that great stuff. And that's fantastic. But what we're going to do is actually navigate to the handle movement option here. We can keep all of the stuff that we created. And if you're using the 2D side scroller template, you're not even going to have any of this stuff. So you don't have to worry about anything. Just head on into this handle movement option right here. What we want to do is get rid of the ASD, WASD input. Really, we just want to get rid of the A and D inputs. So to do that, we're just going to take this node right here, control click on the node and drag it off to get rid of it. After you deleted that, make sure that this value is set to one and you want it in the X direction. When we hit compile and save, it's going to create a character that is always going to walk in the right direction. So go ahead and drag this over to the side. All right, now we need to go into the level blueprint and set the game mode to the one we want to use. So to do that, and you'll see why we're doing this in a second here, it'll make a whole bunch of sense. Click on the endless runner in the editor up in the top right corner of the screen. You see under this little label menu, you have endless runner. Over here, we have game mode override. For game mode override, you want to select the endless runner game mode that we just created. So go ahead and do that, and then control shift S to save everything that you've done. Now, head back into that blueprints folder that's in 2D side scroller BP on the left side of our menu over here. Click on blueprints and go to endless runner game mode. Double click on that to open it. On this menu, you're going to see an option that says default pawn class. For default pawn class, we want to pick the new character that we just created, the endless runner side scroller character. The reason we are doing this is basically what we're doing is we're telling the level, hey, when the player selects this level, use the endless runner game mode. And the endless runner game mode says, hey, man, use the endless runner character that we just created. Because if we don't do that, we're going to have a character that you can still press WASD on and move around. And we don't want the player to be able to do that. So we've got the new different game modes so that we can integrate this in our game that we've already made, like at the level select menu. If you want to play through the story where you do the levels that we created earlier, you can do that. If you want to pick the endless runner game mode, you can do that as well. That's basically how we're setting this up so that you can do either one of the two options. So the next thing we're going to do is test this to make sure it works. So if you navigate to our content browser, click on 2D side scroller character and then we click on the sprites folder, you will see a folder or an icon that says ledge. Just go ahead and drag this in. This is by default the actual location that this is saved in. So you can pick this up if you are using either the template or our preset version, whichever one you want to use and get this lined up with where the player start option is so that the player is going to fall onto this tile when we click play. 
So let's get it lined up like that and click play. As you can see, the character is constantly moving right. You have no control over anything that happens. So we go ahead and hit play again. The player is forced to move to the right, which is exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and hop back up and take a look at this. First, hit Control shift s to save everything that we've done. We don't want anything to happen where we lose all the work that we just did. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this ledge sprite and we're going to turn it into a floor tile that repeats. So you could obviously do this with the floor tiles that we created earlier in our level items, floors, and then uh, sprites folder where we put all these different sprites. And then I believe we actually have it in the actors folder where we have all the different floor pieces that we've created. So you could use this, but just for the sake of everybody being able to do this, we're going to use the 2D side scroller sprites option. So just go ahead and control C that and actually drag that into that floors folder that we created. So that's under the content browser, level items, floors, actors, and we're going to drop it in there. Now, even though it's not an actor, so control shift S to save that movement. What we're going to do in here is we're going to go ahead and right click and in this we're going to go and do a blueprint class and in the blueprint class option we're going to look for sprite so go ahead and type in sprite and the option we want is a paper sprite actor select so you can do this either way you can use a regular actor or you can use a paper sprite actor so i've already showed you how to do it with a regular actor so let's do it with a paper sprite actor this one we're going to call endless base so this is just going to be a flat simple floor tile with no nothing to dodge nothing for the player to do it's just going to be the repeating unit of floor tile so go ahead and double click on the flat base up here we're going to click add a component and the component we're looking for is going to be sprite so type in sprite and then you're going to get the paper sprite and that's going to drop a paper sprite here what we're going to do is click this and sort of drag it off to the side so we can see both of these different things and we're going to drag in the ledge sprite that we have right here in this folder. So it's already in our actors folder. Just drag it to where it shows up in green over here on the right. You just click, drag, and drop that in. Bring this back over to the main page so we can see it and fire it back up. So we want to repeat these floor tiles a few times. So go ahead and hit Control W on this and it's going to create a duplicate of the paper sprite. Just drag it over to the right and once again, Control W to create a duplicate, drag it over to the right. And let's do one more, Control W, drag it over to the right. So now we have our floor tiles all lined up. The next thing that we need is a collision box. So compile and save this and add a component, collision box. Box collision, either way. This box collision, we don't want bound to the last item over there. So go ahead and drag this up to the rendered component inherited. Click the box and drag it over to the end of the very first tile that we created. What you're gonna to wanna to do here for this is scale it in the Y direction, really tall, or the Z direction, which is the blue line because that's the blue line there. So go ahead and uncheck the lock over here on the right side where we see transform. Click that and scale it to like five. That should be plenty. Now click and drag this up so that it's basically blocking the entire floor tile. What's gonna happen is when this player hits this box, we wanna spawn the next set of floor tiles. So to do that, to give it a spawn location, what we're gonna do is click on the render component inherited in the component browser over here in the top left corner of the screen, add a component and we're gonna add an arrow. So just double click to add the arrow. The arrow is going to get dropped in right here. Take this arrow and drag it to the end of the line over here and move on over so we can see it. Drag it so it is like right dead even with the end of the line there, the end of the tile set over here. So drag it on over there. Compile and save. And now what we want to do is click on the box and over here on the content browser on the left, right click the box and add event on component begin overlap. That's going to take us over to the event graph or click on the event graph if it doesn't take you there. Control shift s to save everything that we've done. On this, what we want to do is we want to check to see if the overlapped component is the player character. So drag off of the other character option right there on the on component begin overlap and type in cast to character. And the character we want to cast to this time is the endless runner side scroller character. Normally we've been doing it with the 2D side scroller character. We want to do it with the endless runner side scroller character to make sure that it's the right game mode. If it is the endless runner side scroller character, what we want to do is we want to spawn an actor at location. So spawn actor from class. So the class that we want to spawn is going to be the side scroller character thing that we just made. So the class that we want to spawn is the endless base that we're working on right now. So endless base. So in the little class select class option, type in endless base, and it's going to give us the item that we can spawn right there. So we're going to spawn another one of these tiles, compile and save before anything goes wrong. The next thing we're going to do is get the spawn transform. Well, that's the arrow that we just placed. So click the arrow and drag it right on in here. Off of the arrow, type in get world transform, and that's going to give us the exact node that we need right off the bat compile, save, and everything is right with the cosmos. Now if we head back into our endless runner game mode, we need to drop this ledge in there. So go ahead and click on this ledge that we created initially like four seconds ago and delete it. Next, click on endless base and drag it on up. 
Once again, you need to line the sucker up with the floor spawn in. So just go ahead and get that set up. And that should be good. Control Shift S to save everything. And now click play. Every time the player runs into that wall, it's going to spawn another thing. But we do have a slight problem. The tiles are not at the proper height. So go ahead and save this and escape out of this. And head back into our endless base tile. So if we go to the viewport, we can see that the arrow is a little bit too high. So we're just going to literally drag it down. I'm guessing that we should drag it to zero because that's the spawn location and it seemed like our X and Y was pretty okay. So we'll hit compile and save and then hit play again and see if it spawns it at the right height. It is at the right height, but it's shifted off by a few little units there. So we're going to go ahead and close this out again and drag this arrow over to the right. So let's try 500 units, compile and save, see what happens. And it looks like it's a little too far. So we'll drag it back to like 400, compile and save, and see if we get it this time. And it looks like we got it that time. So now this is just going to keep spawning floor tiles as we go out. It's going to keep spawning the floor tiles, which is pretty cool. We have the beginnings of our endless runner. So we are up to 10 minutes here, and I think this is where we're going to stop. We have the beginnings of our endless runner. What we're going to do in the next parts of the series is we're going to go show you how to add enemies, add things you have to jump over, obstacles, variation to the floor tiles, all of those different things, as well as how to randomly generate them, sort of randomly generate the different tiles so that your player has a varied play experience and it's not the same thing over and over. Another thing we need to handle is deleting the floor tiles after the player's gone from that section. So what's going to happen if we have the player play forever and he just keeps going and going and going? Uh, what's going to happen is that the floor tiles are going to use up so much memory on the computer that it'll end up crashing it at a certain point. Obviously, they don't do that much, but it's, it's not good for performance of the game anyway. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If it did help you, if you did like it, if you do like the series, please consider subscribing so you stay updated when new videos in the series come out. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you at the next video. Peace.